Welcome to the Tennessee Achieves Virtual Community Service Webinar. These webinars are designed to provide you, Tennessee Promise students, with an opportunity to learn more about college success tips, careers in your potential field of study, and other topics we think you will find interesting while you are navigating your educational journey. These webinars will also help you complete your community service requirement while it may be difficult for you to do so at this time. A few housekeeping details before we get started. By logging in as a Tennessee Achieve student, we are able to track your attendance and how long you remain actively engaged during the webinar. Once you complete the webinar, you will automatically be given credit for one hour of community service. We will track how long you watch, and if you do not watch the webinar in its entirety, you will not receive credit. You do not need to complete the community service form for these webinars. Tennessee Achieves will log your hours for you. Tennessee Achieves staff and partners across the state are providing important insight and information we think you will find entertaining and informative. We hope you enjoy this new series of webinars. Hi, and welcome to another uh, installment of the Tennessee Achieves Community Service Webinar Series. Um, hopefully you've watched some of these. If this is your first one, thank you so much for hopping on and, and watching one of our webinars. Um, this is a virtual way for you to complete your community service requirement for, for the Tennessee Promise Scholarship. And hopefully you're finding these to be um, of value to you, learning something new, learning a little bit about different industries, um, a little bit more about college and what it means to be successful there. Today's episode is uh, pretty exciting for us. This is um, an opportunity for us to highlight people on staff at Tennessee Achieves that actually use the scholarship. Um, this is a little different voice you're hearing today. My name is Ben Sterling. I'm filling in for Graham Thomas because Graham didn't use Tennessee Achieves. So I, I'm on staff here and um, used the scholarship back in its first year. And um, so I'm taking over the interview controls and presenting this episode um, along with two of my co-workers, Christine Frazier, who's located in Memphis, um, who used Tennessee Achieves a few years ago, and Lexi Biden, also um, from Middle Tennessee, who used, this, used the scholarship. So hopefully today's episode will give you a little bit of an insight to um, what we think Tennessee Achieves um, can mean for you, what it meant for us in specifically, and how it impacted our success, not only getting to college, but through college and actually after college now since we work here. Uh, so hopefully this is something that's interesting to you and um, we're going to get started with our interview. But before we get into any of the actual questions and in information about what it means to use Tennessee Achieves, I think it's good for you to know who we are. Um, so I'm going to do some, some, some introductions here. I want to start with Christine over in Memphis. So if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you grew up, what high school you went to, where did you go to college, um, colleges, did you go to more than one? Um, go ahead and give us some information, Christine. Hey, so I'm Christine, and I'm from Collierville, Tennessee, which is about 30 minutes outside of Memphis. I was homeschooled my entire life, and then after I graduated from high school, I enrolled at Southwest Tennessee Community College, and I used the Tennessee Promise Scholarship. I graduated in 2016 with my associate's degree in general studies, and then I transferred to the University of Memphis, where I graduated in 2018, and I graduated with two bachelor's degrees, one in communications and the other in healthcare administration. Awesome. Did you have any jobs before you came to Tennessee Achieves? I had a few random jobs um, in high school and in college. I also had a few work study jobs and then some internships. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about what it was like to balance working and going to school in a little bit. But Lexi, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, yeah. So my name is Lexi Fiden. Um, I grew up in Cookville, Tennessee. So that's basically smack dab between Knoxville and Nashville. I went to high school at Cookville High School, graduated from there in 2015, and then went to Tennessee Tech. Well, I graduated from Tennessee Tech University in 2019. But before I went there, I did use Tennessee Promise at Ball State in Cookville. Um, and I graduated from Tennessee Tech with my degree in sociology, concentration in social work. Awesome. Well, I guess I'm the old person of the group. I graduated high school back in 2009. Um, and I mentioned that a little bit earlier. That was actually the year that Tennessee Achieves launched. So I went to high school um, at Carnes High School here in Knoxville. Uh, my family's originally from the Tri-Cities area up around Kingsport, Bristol, Johnson City. Uh, but we moved to Knoxville when I was in um, elementary school, so I consider Knoxville to be my hometown and went to Carnes 
um, which is really close to Pellissippi State. So I was actually able to use uh, Tennessee Achieves and attend Pellissippi State where I studied a lot of different things. I think I changed my major four times um, <laughs> while I was at Pellissippi. I studied anything from wildlife and fisheries to history to political science. I don't really know what, I, what my goal was while I was there, um, but I, I graduated with an associate's degree um, in political science when I transferred to Austin Peay um, in Clarksville, Tennessee, where I studied public management. I have a bachelor's degree in public management with a minor in political science from Austin P. Um, graduated from there in 2014 and started working with Tennessee Achieves in June of 2014. So in my sixth year now, um, working at Tennessee Achieves and truly feel thankful to have been able to use the scholarship and be impacted by it for so many seasons of my life. Um, but as we dig into what Tennessee Achieves actually means for us as staff and, and how it has impacted us on our trajectory to and through college, I want to start ta start off talking about that first exposure to Tennessee Achieves, what it was like when you heard about it. Um, was this something that was sort of understood? I know, Christine, you maybe had a different experience than Lexi. You're coming from the homeschool background where you don't have a school counselor um, in your ear every day telling you to complete this application. Lexi, I'm not exactly sure what that was like for you. I know for me it was um, it was unique because it was the first year, and I'll, I'll save my story till for last. So, Christine, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it was like for you? Um, how did you learn about Tennessee Achieves and when you were applying? Is that something that you did um, with your mom or what, what, did, what did that look like? Yeah, so I remember learning about the Tennessee Promise Scholarship when I was doing a little research on some scholarships in my senior year in high school. Uh, when I graduated in 2015, that was when the Tennessee Promise Scholarship actually launched for Shelby County students. So there was a lot of buzz around the scholarship. And that's how I basically heard about the scholarship and I applied at home with my mom. That's awesome. Um, so Lexi, why don't you tell us a little bit about a little bit about what you how, how you encountered Tennessee Achieves. I know um, that's interesting that you said there was a buzz around it back in 2015. I was working at Tennessee Achieves then and it it's true. It's what exactly what it felt like to for us as well. It was um, sort of a big splash when Tennessee Promise launched statewide. So interesting that, that you had that same perspective from, from the student end. But Lexi, tell us a little bit about your experience. Yeah, yeah. So my mom, she was actually really proactive in looking for scholarships even or as early as my junior year of high school. Um, and I know she had heard about Tennessee Promise, but at the time in 2014, it wasn't available. So she was excited when in 2015, I was going to be eligible when it went statewide to receive Tennessee Promise. So my mom was really kind of the driving force and making me apply and everything. But I do know that my school was really pushing for everyone to apply for it as well. Um, but I think I did it just at home with my mom because she was kind of, she was ready to get on it for sure. Yeah, that's, um, we hear that a lot. The moms can be awfully motivating. Um, we have a, a slide that we often share that says, um, applied for that Tennessee promise. So my mama would shut up. So I, I kind of, I, I can understand that my experience is a little different. Um, I actually learned about it through my school counselor. I, um, my, the conversations around college in my house growing up were pretty limited. We didn't have a ton of discussions about where, when, how, um, in terms of college. So for me, I got that guidance from my school counselor who exposed me to the scholarship and I was able to apply um, and follow through that way. And for my family, this was a huge deal because um, I, I didn't know how to even begin this process of going to college. So bringing the not only the money that was going to allow me to attend college tuition free was that exciting, but also all of the steps and emails and um, communication that Tennessee Achieves brought. I think a lot of people see what we're doing now um, and think that this is something new, but that communication was the exact same in 2009. It wasn't nearly as organized, but it was the same, um, you know, voice of you need to do this. And I understand that you're the first in your family to do this. Um, and this is what's next. And this is what's next. And all of the organized communication made a huge difference for me. Um, did you guys have uh, did you feel the impact of that as you were making your transition from high school to college? Did Tennessee Achieves have an impact on that decision making for you? Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, tell me a little bit about that. 
Yeah, I know for me, um, I didn't do too well on my ACT when I was in high school. Um, so I wasn't able to get like, a full ride to go to the colleges that I was thinking about going. Um, so just being able to have the Tennessee Promise Scholarship and to know that I wouldn't have to worry about student loans, and that was great for me. And then the constant communication and the reminders of, hey, don't forget your community service hours are due. Um, that was really great to keep me on track as I transitioned from high school and I had to learn to be more responsible with my time. Yeah, definitely. Lexi, do you have a similar experience? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know um, I didn't really do great on my ACT either, for sure. But also my mom was a single mom. So, you know, paying for college was kind of scary to look at. So definitely not having to worry about the money side of these really expensive schools that it was looking like I was going to be going to getting that uh, weight lifted on both myself and my mom was definitely a huge factor in the decision making. Yeah, I I totally see that and agree. I I know that for like my family and for me personally, since we didn't have so much experience in the college realm, what you hear is that college is super expensive. And like that's all that you know. Like, okay, so college is hard to access and it's expensive. So if I'm, you know, if it's just me, 18-year-old Ben thinking about going to college, then I, I'm probably not gonna go because I'm not I don't have any money and um I don't have the academics to get into UT, which is here in Knoxville. So for me, my trajectory was basically UT or bust, and it was a likely bust because I couldn't get into UT and I didn't have enough money to go. So right. Tennessee of Cheese brought the idea of going to college tuition free to me. Um, but as I tell people all the time, I think the money part of it for me was half the battle. The other half was all of the support that it brought um, along with a mentor that helped coach me through this process. I often say that um, if you'd said the word FAFSA to my mom in 2009, she would have thought you were talking about like an auto manufacturer. She didn't even know what FAFSA was. Um, so bringing all of that um, industry knowledge to me in a way that made sense was, was huge and having a mentor that continually followed up uh, with reminders for a procrastinating high schooler. For me, that was a huge difference maker. Did you guys have that same experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, de I definitely struggled with managing my time and completing all of my assignments on time. So having someone to text me and remind me to do my work um, besides my mom really helped me stay on top of everything. Yeah, totally yeah. get that. Lex, do you have anything you want to say about that? Yeah, I think mostly for me, the mentor aspect of Tennessee Achieves was a huge help, especially my, you know, nobody I knew had done Tennessee Promise or anything. So community service reminders and making sure that I was, you know, going to an advisor or whatever the case was, having that support definitely was beneficial to me. Yeah. So what we hear often from students is they have trouble even before they get to college, right? Um, whether that's applying for college, if it's working through the FAFSA, which we all know can be a challenge. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of families don't even know what it is important. Um, there's a process called verification that off, that students often encounter once they've already filed the FAFSA and they think that it's over. Um, I want to talk a little bit about any hurdles that you encountered before you even got to college. And I'll speak on one for myself. And this is a little bit transparent for me. Um, but whenever I was applying for Tennessee Achieves, I remember as a high schooler thinking, OK, um, what do I need to do to get to college? And I've been, I'm given this application for Tennessee Achieves and I fill that out and I'm like, OK, good. Where do I go now? Um, and I just assumed that by applying for Tennessee Achieves that I'd completed all of the necessary applications to start college the, in August following high school graduation. Right. I just thought, OK, I submitted this application. I'll show up on campus in the fall and it's just going to work itself out. Right. Um, obviously, that's not how it works. And for me, um, I definitely felt like um, I didn't know where to turn at, at times. And Tennessee Achieves always seemed to come in right at the last or not at the last minute at the right time to tell me when to actually complete that college application and complete the FAFSA. Fortunately, I was never selected for verification I, and I never had to deal with that. But we know that a ton of students do. I, I had trouble finding community service every semester. 
Um, and Tennessee Achieves was there to provide opportunities for me to volunteer. I know back in those days, the organization was a lot smaller and they hosted Tennessee Achieves specific volunteer opportunities um, at uh, Second Harvest Food Bank in Maryville and a lot of different places where I was able to knock those hours out there. Um, did you guys have any hurdles that you had to get across? I know that, Lexi, you said your mom was, it was just you and her a lot of times going through this process was fast. It's somewhat daunting for you guys. Yeah, yeah. I think the FAFSA was probably the biggest hurdle. Um, I don't know many people that love the FAFSA. So my mom, especially, you know, like I said, being a single mom, parents divorced, whatever the case was, it was not always fun to fill out. Um, but we had those resources from Tennessee Achieves. And I, I can remember texting my mentor with like specific FAFSA questions and just being like, I don't, we don't know how to answer this. And they they definitely helped us through that process. So it, it really helped us out getting through FAFSA season every year. Yeah, right. Yeah. Christine, I, I, since you were homeschooled, I think you may even have some students that are listening to this that are homeschooled. And for students that are in public school, a lot of them will file FAFSA at school um, with the help mm -hmm. of a school counselor or someone from the state that's there or someone from Tennessee Achieves that's there helping file FAFSAs. And that process is really expedited by professionals that have done it before and have navigated it before and provide that extra confidence. But a homeschooled student doesn't always have access to those sort of FAFSA file nights and, and things mm -hmm. like that. How did you guys get over the FAFSA and um, even hear about it to begin with and know what to do next? Yeah, we definitely uh, received the communication from Tennessee Achieve about the FAFSA and you guys were in the staff uh, was great about providing us with resources and the steps that we needed to take in order to complete the FAFSA. Um, we definitely struggled with it. I think like what Lexi was saying, all the steps and all the different scenarios that take place with the FAFSA. Um, we definitely struggled with it and we ended up going to the financial aid office at Southwest for some in-person assistance. And that's what I would encourage a lot of students to do. If you are homeschooled or if you're struggling with the FAFSA, make sure you go to the financial aid office at your intended college because they're the ones who can walk you through um, the FAFSA in person if you're not able to get help with your high school counselor. That's awesome advice. I totally agree with that. So let's shift gears a little bit. So let's put ourselves in our first year of college. Um, I know for me, this was quite the time uh, in terms of. Um, highs and lows. Um, talk a little bit about any challenges that you had your first year of college, um, whether that was academic, social, time management, could be all the above, like for me. Um, but Christine, tell us a little bit about um, your first year, maybe even just your first semester and any challenges that you had. Yeah, so I remember for me, um, I procrastinated a lot when I was in high school, and then that transferred <laughs> to college as well. <laughs> Um, so I think my first semester, I spent just trying to figure out how to get used to college life, how to balance my work schedule, how to balance my social life, and um, how to balance my school schedule. And I, for me, I used a planner, um, and that really helped me stay on top of everything. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. Um, were you strategic about your, your class schedule to try to work it with your work schedule? Um, I know a lot of students work. I, I feel like when I ask that question at a team meeting, 75% of people raise their hand and say they work. And I know that can really become a challenge for students if they're not strategic. Is that something that you thought about when you were registering for classes? Yeah, that's definitely something I thought about. Um, I worked full time while I was in college. And then I also took a lot of credit hours. I probably took around 18 to 21 credit hours each semester. Wow. Um, so I did a lot of online classes. So I definitely had to learn how to be disciplined. So I could check my online classes and stay on top of all of that. I um, mean, I did a lot of night classes as well. Yeah, that's that's wild. I, I don't think I could do 18 or 21 hours now, much less when I was 18 years old. So that's awfully impressive. And I think you're a great resource to students in, in Memphis. Lexi, what about you? Any challenges your first year or were they academic, more social? Um, what was it that you were encountering? Yeah, so I think more so within my first year, I definitely had struggles with learning how to study and what type of studying was best for me. Um, I don't think you really focus on that in high school. At least I didn't. It was kind of just thrown out there. Nobody really taught you different studying techniques or anything. So when I got to college, I really kind of just I would literally Google different study habits and 
I tried the flashcards. I tried, um, you know, Quizlet, different things like that. I mean, it ended up being the best thing for me was to take uh, my five page of notes or whatever the case was and just rewrite them and highlight and things like that. So I was able to figure that out, but it was definitely hard. I mean, you kind of are thrown into it, especially the first semester and it can be hard to keep your head above water, but it's just really being proactive and trying to figure out what's the best way for you. Yeah, I, I encountered that as well. I, I like to, it's kind of tough to do, but you are learning how to learn a lot of times in college. I think for me, I just skated through high school, no problems, got out of there with a decent GPA um, and never even thought about what was going to happen after the, you know, the June of 2009, after I graduated, I didn't even consider that there was life beyond that. So um, for me to get to college and be thrown into a college classroom with professors that have rigor and actually have expectations, it was a big challenge for me. Um, if any of anybody listening has ever met Chrissy, our executive director, she was actually one of my professors the first year of college for me. And that was a, an experience for me, but it was taught me some really awesome lessons of um, what it means to apply yourself and actually study and really also see the benefits of putting in that work in the classroom. And my first year of college at Pellissippi, I lost my Hope Scholarship. I fell below a 3.0 GPA. Um, I think I got down to like a 2.2. I had a 1.8 semester. It was bad. I mean, my first year academically was a big struggle because I had never learned. I had never had to study before. And I thought I could do the same thing. I, there were points in my first year of college, I wasn't even buying the textbooks for the classes. So I was really struggling um, to get academics, uh, get academically acclimated, um, as well as working about 30 or 40 hours a week at the same time. So um, Tennessee Achieves really provided me backup um, when I lost my Hope Scholarship. And not only was it providing at that point all of the social uh, support that Tennessee Achieves provides for students, but it was also then such a financial support for me and my family to continue my journey into college. Um, and I like to think now when I look back on my college, a college experience, that time at community college was a game changer. Had I not gone to community college my first two years of college, highly unlikely that I would have a bachelor's degree to get today uh, because I was able to learn those hard lessons of failing in a class and what that means and how to study um, and having empathetic professors that have the time to invest in me um, personally and see, see that I'm successful in whatever it is that I'm trying to study in that class. Um, because when I transferred to Austin P, I had a 4.0 when I was at Austin P. And I, I was, I'm not a 4.0 student today. I was, I've never been a 4.0 student in my life, but because at Austin P, when I transferred, I'd already learned the ropes um, at a community college and how to be successful. That was such a game changer for me. Did you guys have that same experience after you transferred? Did you feel like you sort of learned how to learn in community college and then just like started sprinting when you got in um, to your, to your four year transfer? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that, Lexi. Yeah. Um, I, for me, that high school was really hard for me. Um, I was not a great high school student for sure. Um, but once I made that transition into my community college, it was a small community college, but I had that one-on-one -on -one time with my professors when I was struggling, like they knew me and they could see that I was putting in the effort or whatever the case was yeah, exactly. and so help me. Um, but, you know, I think if I had just thrown myself into a four year, I wouldn't have had that, that much attention uh, to grow and to kind of figure things out for myself, I would have just kind of been thrown in there and it would have been really hard to keep my head above water if I hadn't had that transition. Yeah, I think so too. I, I, that's the same experience I had. What about you, Christine? Yeah, I definitely agree with you guys. Um, I know for me going to Southwest first, it allowed me to get used to college life and a college setting without being overwhelmed by a really large university. Um, and then like what Lexi was saying, the classes at a community college are a lot smaller. So you're able to meet with your professors more on an individual level and you're able to get that extra assistance um, versus when you're in a university and there are 200 other students in the classroom. So I think um, I definitely benefited when I went to the University of Memphis. Yeah. So did you guys ever um, access any campus resources while you were there? I think we're going to talk a little bit about um, academic resources now, and we'll talk about some of the um, 
social resources later, but tell me if did, did you guys ever use any of the writing labs, mass tutors, anything like that while you were in, in community college specifically? Yes. <laughs> so oh, tell me I, about it then. <laughs> <laughs> I am not good at math. I had to take remedial math. Um, so when I got to statistics, it was a real challenge for me. So I definitely stayed in the tutoring center at least two or three times a week to get through statistics. And that really helped me. It's a game changer. I think those are um, the unspoken secrets of the community college. Um, there are so many resources out there. What about you, Lexi? Did you ever use any? Yes, exactly the same as Christine. I'm not a math person. Never have I been. Never will I be. But I did have to do the remedial math. So that was helpful. But I did go to math tutoring often. And I tell my students all the time, like, I do not think I would have passed math. It was the one math yeah. I had to take. So definitely using that math tutoring, it, it helps a lot. Yeah, and there is absolutely no shame in that. I like that you guys are so open and transparent about it because we're all there to, to be successful and, and graduate. I know that when I was um, at community college, I did not use the resources. And that's one of the reasons why my GPA was what it was and why I went through the the, the losing of my Hope Scholarship and feeling like I, I had nowhere to turn at a certain point in college because I was not going out of my way to find those resources and utilize what was around me. Um, so it's awesome that you guys did that. And I think you can tell based on your successes now, um, just how much those little decisions like that can, can, how much of an impact they can have on your trajectory after college. Um, so let's talk about getting plugged in on campus. I know um, that was something for me whenever I transferred to Austin P. I I got plugged into a lot of different um, places on campus. You know, I, I feel like I was able to be more involved in campus life once I got to Austin P. because I'd learned how to be a good college student in the classroom at the community college. So I had two years of um, taking classes at Austin P. I was studying something that I really enjoyed and was interested in, had some awesome professors that encouraged me to get involved in a lot of different things on campus. I had opportunities to um, be on student government, which gave me, I mean, I sat on four, um, hiring committees for the head, head football coach and for the athletic director and got to see how all of those sorts of uh, searches and, uh, contract negotiations and all that stuff works out. It really opened my eyes to um, a lot of different types of careers, um, along with being plugged in with um, other on-campus jobs that I had and taking on responsibilities there. I was able to help organize a lot of the campus events that are pretty popular at Austin P. And it really showed me um, how much, not, you know, it showed me how much you can do once you graduate from college with a degree that may not, I think a lot of people think when they work at a college or in higher ed that they just have to be a teacher and you, or a professor. And you see how much is go, goes into to organizing all of that. And um, for me, it was, it created a shift in my mind as to what it was that I wanted to do once I graduated from college. And that was work with college students. And I mean, here we are now. So um, did you guys get plugged in on campus, um, you know, student organizations, those sorts of things? You can talk about from a community college perspective or your four-year pr perspective or both. Um, Christine, you want to kick us off with that? Yeah, so when I was at Southwest, um, I joined the cheerleading team, and then I was also a member of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society that they had. So being a cheerleader definitely allowed me to make new friends on campus. Um, and it allowed me to visit the different campuses at Southwest and also attend different community events that, that they hosted as well. Yeah. What about University of Memphis? At University of Memphis, I was in the Adult and Student Commuter Services uh, Club, and that was a really great opportunity just to meet other students um, and determine other interests. Yeah, do you think that being involved in those organizations um, contributed to your success as a student? Definitely. Um, as a Southwest cheerleader, we had to maintain a certain GPA. So that was a really good motivation for me. And um, then also with Phi Theta Kappa, they offered a lot of scholarships. And that came in handy when I transferred to U of M. Yeah. So I think those are some things that students may not realize. Um, just by being involved on campus, not only is there a level of a, a layer of accountability for you because um, you have like minded peers around you that are investing in their education as well, but there are also some monetary benefits for in terms of scholarships and things like that. So that's really good, um, really good perspective, Christine. What about you, Lexi? Did you get plugged in on campus? 
Yeah, you guys are so fun. And I'm not, I actually did not get plugged in to any kind of, you know, clubs or groups or anything when I was at community college or Tennessee Tech. Um, and that is truly one of the biggest regrets that I have from college. And I tell my students all the time, it's so important that you do that. Um, and I think my social life aspect in college really suffered because I didn't do things like that. I went to work, I went to school and I went home and I never felt that sense of, I guess, you know, like I was in it, like I was in college and that that's something I wish I would have done. So I definitely regret that and think it's super important to do that. Yeah. It, for all the students listening, I encourage you to just plug in with at least one student group. Um, and I know a lot of times that, that you think that you don't have time. Lexi, that's probably what your mindset was. That was my mindset at, when I was at Pellissippi is I don't have time for this. I've got to go to work. I've got my friends from high school, um, all of that, you know, and at the end of the day, I wish I'd pl been plugged in more at Pellissippi too, because I, I really think that I would have done better in class had I had some more accountability on campus. So I encourage all students, at least give it a shot. If you do it and you don't like it, you can say you did. But if you, I, I find it incredibly unlikely that you're not going to like being plugged in on campus because it does give you that sense of um, ownership and a sense of family at, and at your college. And to me, that really builds success. Um, so let's shift a little bit now into our postgraduate careers. Um, you guys hold a different role on the team than I do. You all are working one-on-one -on -one a lot of times with students and walking them through their college journey. Um, tell me a little bit about how you're using, and you, you all already have quite a bit, already done this quite a bit, but tell me a little bit about how you use your personal experiences from being a Tennessee Achieve student in your coaching of students now. And what advice do you have for those students um, that are just now um, finishing up their first year of college, about to start their second year, that may be thinking, um, this, is this actually for me and is, is this something I need to stick with? So tell us a little bit about that, of, of how you leverage your personal experience. Yeah, so I know a lot of the students that I work with, um, they struggle with time management. And like we were talking about earlier, that's something that I struggled with too while I was in college. So now I'm able to help my students develop a daily schedule um, based off their uh, class syllabus and also their work schedule so that they can ensure that all their assignments are completed and nothing falls through the cracks. Um, I would also tell students um, when they are struggling with determining if college is right for them um, or if the major that they picked is right, I would say don't stress out about it. Um, you can always change your major. I think I changed mine at least five or six times. <laughs> and I still didn't know <laughs> what too. I wanted to do. <laughs> um, and most of the time, you don't end up working in your area of study anyway. So it's not a permanent decision. Oh, yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. How about you, Lexi? Yeah, definitely the changing your major. I think a lot of my students get bummed out by that and they get scared when they're changing their major. I, I change my major, I think, five times too. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't necessarily push you back or make it less likely for you to graduate. It's, it's okay. This is your time to figure out what you're going to do and what you're actually interested in. And um, But definitely just don't worry about that stuff, you know, and use your resources on campus, go see your advisor, go talk to financial aid, go get tutoring. Um, it's okay to ask for help. Um, that was one thing I think I struggled with when I was going to tutoring. It was like, I have to ask for help. Why can't I just do this by myself? But that's, that's the way you're going to get through college is by asking for help. Everyone around you is there to help you. So definitely do that and definitely talk to your professors because they aren't as scary as they seem. And a lot of the times they'll help you out if you just show them you're trying and let them know that, you know, you, you, you need them there for you. Yeah, I could not agree more with that. We actually did an, an interview yesterday with several college professors. So that you, those listening, if you haven't already listened to that one, I, I'd say check that out too, um, because they're not as scary as you think they are. And when I look back on my college success, specifically academic success, it was all because of my professors. I had a professor um, at Austin P. her name, um, was Dr. Magruder, and she um, is a little bit infamous for some people in the public management program at Austin P. But her and I really um, got along, and we're on the same wavelength. And had, and I think 
she is one of the reasons why I graduated. Um, had it not been for her, I'd probably, I might still be in college <laughs> today, honestly. Um, she was just so motivating for me um, and challenged me in ways that um, I had never been challenged before. And I think one of the things for me when I was in college and right out of college is I thought I was smarter than I was. And she was somebody that brought me back to reality a lot of times. And um, I, I can remember even specific examples of pr doing a presentation um, in her classroom. And she, if you're doing, if you were doing a presentation in her classroom and she didn't think that you were doing all that you possibly could, she would literally just stop you and tell you to leave. Um, and I got stopped and told to leave three times before I finally got through an entire presentation in front of her. And after that, it felt like an entire burden was lifted off of me. Um, but being challenged by professors like that, I think can make a huge difference. So I encourage students to build those relationships because you never know um, where that relationship could go because that, that professor can write letters of recommendation for you. They know people that um, if specifically at community college, if you're thinking about transferring, those professors oftentimes know people at the four-year institutions and can help you make a good transfer. My brother is a great example of this. He studied something very specific in college. He studied um, fisheries biology. And when he was making the transfer from Pellissippi to Tennessee Tech, where Lexi went, um, his professor, his favorite professor at Pellissippi, had a relationship with the department head of that program at Tennessee Tech and was able to get him um, into a really nice schedule, which then led to a, a job after college. So those professors make a huge, huge difference. And I totally agree with that. Um, did any of you guys have anything else on that or um, before we move forward? Um, I will say just one quick story about a relationship with one of my professors when I was in community college. Uh, the community college I went to is very small. So not only was I bad at math, but I was also bad at science. So I had the same biology professor for both years of biology and she, we had a good relationship. I would constantly ask her questions and go to her office hours. Um, and I was always trying really hard, always studying in study groups. And she took notice of that. And I didn't do great on all of the tests, but at the end of the year, I remember she gave me these extra credit opportunities because she knew I was working hard. So that is definitely one benefit you could use possibly if you just are, you know, talking with your professors and letting them know you're trying and going to them for any assistance. Absolutely. I, I, another example, I had a, um, it was a political theory class and I'm not a, a real, I, I don't, do well in theory classes. I would rather have like tangible facts. I don't like to think about it in terms of theory. And I really struggled in this class. Professor was incredibly smart um, and had super high expectations for his uh, students. And for me, I submitted a paper probably halfway through the semester. And he literally wrote back, this did not answer the question that I asked, <laughs> zero. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I spent two weeks working on this paper and I just got a zero. Uh, but I was able to go to his his office during his office hours and say, look, I, I, I tried actually. And I, I just completely missed the bucket here. What can I do? And he was able to, he let me rewrite the paper and didn't give me the zero. And I was able to earn the grade that I deserved on that, that assignment. So had I not had that relationship with that professor, who knows what my end of grade or end of year grade would have been there. Right. Um, Christine, do you have any stories about those relationships? Yeah, um, when I was at University of Memphis, I was in a really difficult communication class. It was the senior capstone project class. And I remember I went to my professor's office hours at least five or six times throughout the semester um, just to get help on assignments um, and get help with my presentation skills for the project. Because if we did not pass that class, we couldn't graduate. So I made sure that I stayed in her office hours so I could get all the assistance that I needed so I could pass the class. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Well, this has been really um, insightful. I think we've provided the students with a lot of nice information about not only being successful once you're um, getting into college your first couple semesters, but also how to succeed once you are in the final couple of semesters of college and how to finish off strong. I think that means a lot um, in terms of finding a job after college is how well you finished um, because you're going to gain a lot of really valuable knowledge those last couple of semesters. Um, one thing I'll say before we wrap this up with our final three questions is don't look at um, 
your first job out of college as the end all be all to your career. Uh, a lot of students pick a major and they're like, well, that's going to be what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And I try to encourage students to job shadow so that they can see this. You don't have to necessarily do what your degree says. Um, and sometimes your degree is something very broad um, for communications majors. That can mean thousands of different types of jobs. And I encourage you to get into um, the industry and see all of the different opportunities that a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree or a certificate will provide for you. Um, because just your first job out of college is often a stepping stone, a pretty quick stepping stone in some cases to something better or something that you enjoy more. Um, for example, my first job, I graduated on a Friday from Austin P. And on the Monday after that, I started at Budweiser of Clarksville and I was working as a salesman um, for a beer, distribu beer distributor in Clarksville. Um, that was not what I studied. I studied public management. I wanted to work in the public sector, uh, but I needed a job and I knew that that wasn't going to be my job forever, um, but it was something that was going to get me into the workforce, gain some experience. I look back on that experience. It was a short lived job. I worked there for six months, but I learned lessons in that's in those six months that I carry with me today, six years into my career at Tennessee Chiefs. Um, so I think all of those small jobs that you're going to have in college and just after college, even if it's not what you want to do forever, you're gaining experience and you're gaining really valuable knowledge that you can put into practice whenever you do end up in the career that you actually want on down the road. Um, did you guys work jobs? I think did both of y'all's first careers were was with Tennessee Achieves, right? Yeah. 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 So you guys landed on, in, in an awesome spot right off the bat, I, if I do say so myself. Mm hmm. For sure. <laughs> well, OK, so we ask the same three questions to every video, every interview that we do um, to try to wrap everything up. Um, so I'm going to start with that first one. Uh, what is one thing that you wish you knew while you were a, a student in college? Christine, why don't you go first? Yeah, I wish I knew to use the resources that the college offered um, a lot sooner than I did. I wish I got tutoring my first semester instead of waiting until my second semester. Um, I also wish I met with my advisor more and I wish that I went to financial aid and admissions more so I could stay on top of things like verification. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Lexi? Um, I think one thing I wish I knew is just how fast it goes by. Uh, it's really easy in the moment to feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I have two years here, or four years here, or whatever. It's, and it seems like it's just going to take you forever. But that motivation to get to the end goal to graduate with your degree, it's going to fly by in the blink of an eye. So just take advantage of where you're at, you know, join the clubs, really live in the moment and it's going to be here. You're going to graduate before you know it. That's so true. I've now been out of college longer than I was in college, and that seems <laughs> insane to me that that's the case. Um, I think for me, what I wish I would have known is how impactful intention is. Um, I, as a student, was not very intentional. I didn't study intentionally. I didn't prepare for classes intentionally. I just flew by the seat of my pants and um, was very reactive, not proactive at all. That followed me into my first a couple of months in my career, um, which led to a quick pivot. But um, I wish I would just have realized early in college how important being intentional about studying and being intentional about learning and building relationships, how much that intention matters. That was something I, I learned way too late. Um, OK, so the second question is, what is your one most important piece of advice for students? And we interviewed two college presidents yesterday. And they both provided two. So let's just keep them to one here. What's your one most important piece of advice? Um, Lexi, you will go with you first this time. OK, for me, I'm going to say since I didn't do it, you know, get involved on campus, integrate right. yourself into the community, wherever it might be, whatever it might be. Join a club, make friends and enjoy it. And yeah, just get involved where you can. That's great advice. What about you, Christine? Um, I would say to never give up, no matter how hard things get. Um, never give up on your dreams. Um, don't let temporary feelings or temporary roadblocks that you're experiencing um, stop you from achieving your ultimate goal of graduating. Yeah, I think that's that's awesome advice. Mine would be, um, we just talked about it a minute ago, but get to know your professors. Um, 
they're an unbelievable resource for you. Not only have they been teaching in a classroom and know their content very well, they also went to college and work on a college campus and understand the ins and outs of campus and a lot of times admissions and financial aid and all of the things that go into being successful in college. The professors oftentimes have some tips and tricks that will make you a more successful student. So build relationships with them. I often say to students that if you know your professor's name, that's a start because I think a lot of students don't even know their professor's names. I was guilty of that for sure. Um, But if you don't know their name, they definitely don't know your name and that's a problem and it's not going to lead to success. So get to know them, learn their name, learn a little bit about them, make sure they know who you are. Um, I think that will serve you well um, in college. And the last question, this one is, um, this is the, the question that everyone seems to have tr- have trouble with or struggle with. If you could do anything in the world besides work at Tennessee Achieves, and I'm going to say this this way, you can't work at Tennessee Achieves, what would you be doing? Uh, hmm. Christine, you go first. Um, I would probably still want to do something with education um, and still would want to make an impact in the lives of others. So I would probably do something, the social services department at a college or school. Okay. I, I, I totally see that. What about you, Lexi? Um, me? That's a hard question, but I think I definitely want to be doing something helping people in some way. Um, probably so, something similar to social services, maybe like DCS or something, but just something making an impact on someone's life. Well, y'all, you guys have um, much more empathetic hearts than me because if it was up to me and I couldn't work at Tennessee Achieves and I could only do one thing, for those that know me know that I'm a big outdoorsman and like to be on the water. That's like where I would prefer to be at all times. Uh, I would be a guide, a fishing guide in Mm. Fort St. Joe, Florida, and I would just live at the beach and take people fishing for a living. Um, but that's not a reality for me. And I love working at Tennessee Achieves. So that's not, maybe that's my retirement job. I'll do that when I'm um, when I retire from Tennessee Achieves in about 40 years. So Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're very awesome. fortunate, though, for sure. We are. We, we certainly are. Well, I appreciate you guys for taking the time to um, think about your, your journeys to and through college and really appreciate what your, the skill sets that you bring to our team and the perspectives that you bring and share with students every day. It's definitely making a difference. I think there are hundreds, if not thousands, of students Um, that are in college and have graduated from college because you guys have provided them with that support. So I'm really appreciative of of your teamwork and and all that you bring to the team. Appreciate you, Ben. All right, guys. Well, you guys have a good rest of the day. And students, make sure that you hang on um, to to see the end of this video because it'll tell you um, how your community service hour will be recorded. Um, heads up that you don't actually have to go submit the community service form for this. You're going to get credit for for watching this video alone. So um, just by logging in, you got credit. But uh, make sure that you stay connected with your Tennessee Achieves coach, stay connected with your professors, and we look forward to seeing you on down the road. Thank you for watching this installment of the Tennessee Achieves Virtual Community Service Webinar. Your attendance will be automatically recorded, and your one hour of community service is being credited to you. Please click submit on this screen to ensure that your attendance is recorded for you. For this community service opportunity, you will not need to complete the community service form. We hope you found this opportunity to be engaging and informative. Please watch more of this series by visiting www.tnachieves.org. We hope you have a great day. Thank you.